Hello everybody and welcome back to Denmark 101. Today I want to talk to you about one of Denmark's most iconic bar culture facets and elements, and that is, of course, the bodega. Now, a bodega in Denmark is not what you may imagine from other countries and other places. Many other places, a bodega is a corner shop. It's where you sell newspapers and where you uh, maybe you go down to buy at a, a green shop here in Denmark, which would be a, a place selling fruit and vegetables, um, typically in more ethnic neighborhoods. Now, a bodega here is, is quite simply just a, uh, what we would call is a local dive bar, a little cowboy bar back in, back in Arizona or back in the U.S. Now, that's a little bit like a pub, the local place, the local watering hole, where you go to drink. Uh, where you you walk in and and the beer is cheap, uh, things are gritty. Maybe you have only one or two or three bartenders that that run the place week you know, you know like every night. And they're always there. They know who you are. Uh, you walk in, you kind of get that suspicious eye, like who is this person? Do I know them? Will they fit? Are they going to cause trouble? And that's, that's the essence of a good Danish bodega. And I've, I've talked in previous videos about the fact that here in Denmark, everything is much more relaxed. So it's not really a huge nightclub country and the mentality isn't always get, get all done up and look spotless and then go out. It's very much you go out with men and women, friends, dates, you name it, and everybody gets together. They go, they share tables in these small little dive bars, these bodegas, uh, and uh, you know they drink their cheap beer. And when I say cheap beer, this is uh, I'm talking here about let's let's call them more authentic bodegas because as as areas gentrify, you get more and more pressure on bodegas, and people go to these bodegas and still want the bodega ambiance, but they get increasingly more willing to pay more and more for beer, uh, or shots, or or spirits, whatever it may be. Uh, but in, in in Denmark, if we're looking at maybe a cocktail bar or we're looking at a, a fancy bar, then then maybe you're gonna pay as much as 40, 40 kroner for, for a bottle, 40, 40, some places 50 kroner for a bottle. Uh, and in a good bodega, a traditional bodega in central Copenhagen, and they're hard to find, uh, again, because they're under pressure and kind of getting pushed out or gentrifying, but you can still find bodegas where you can buy a bottle of beer in Christianshavn or, or Norboro for 16, 17 kroner. And I know this is very much the case in uh, all throughout the rest of Denmark as well, where where you know bodegas are a cornerstone of the local of the local bar community. So you walk in, it's super cozy, super intimate. Everybody's hanging out, everybody's uh, socializing, friendly, laid back. Maybe in their groups, playing various very traditional Danish drinking games, which I'll talk about in another video: cups and dice, and a couple other ones. Um, and you have, typically you do, you have a lot of the traditional pub-ish type of things on the walls, uh, little drink plaques, signs, old signage. It, it feels old and funky and full of life and full of character. Uh, many are very smoky, although technically smoking is banned in a lot of larger venues, uh, especially within, within Denmark. It's been banned for a number of years. There may or may not be an exemption for, for small places, specifically let's call it a bodega exemption, although a lot of these bodegas may just be in violation and, and, and you know that smoke is such an inherent part of the dive bar bodega tradition that it, it, you know, they just keep going no matter what. But uh, increasingly you do have more and more that, that, that are kind of smoke free. Um, but these places, they're, they're great, and you get, you get so much character from the, from the bartenders, and, and they're uh, also wonderful because you get this great mixture of, I'm saying great a lot, right? But you get this wonderful mixture of, of young people and old timers, and, and then you have, you have your, your good old basic beers, your, your Tubo, your Carlsberg, other, other local beers, uh, and then a lot of the traditional spirits, your Gameldansk or Underberg, I've talked a little bit about those, um, usually dirt cheap, and everybody just sitting back, relaxing and enjoying. So one must do, if you're uh, from the outside and coming to Denmark, is to go and visit a, a, at least one good bodega, uh, find an authentic one, one where you walk in and everybody looks up and you can tell that at least a third of the people in there are probably regulars. Find that, um, and if you're if you're Danish or you've been living in Denmark for a long time, I would love to hear what it is that makes a bodega for you. 